From Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. I'm ABC's M. Wynn in Washington. The late Senator Bob Dole will lie in state in the Capitol Rotunda. Details on that ceremony coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we are at 62 degrees. You can definitely feel a difference from yesterday morning. I left my jacket at home. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday, December 9th. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Hope you're having a great week. The weather has been very interesting, to say the least. Uh, today is one of those days where the temperatures go in a complete opposite direction. It started to warm up a little bit yesterday, and I think you were mentioning the fact that it's more humid this morning. Yes, I felt that as soon as I opened the door. I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. Jacket not required. So how high will temperatures go today, Mike Osterhage? Near record today and pretty, I think, a good chance of at least tying the record tomorrow. So we're talking low to mid 80s the next couple of days. Talk about humidity and look at that picture. Boy, we've already got some fog showing up. This is over there by the airport. The airport towers right there and we're looking off to the west and that's uh, 410. Visibility has dropped down. It was about uh, six miles, just roughly half hour, 45 minutes ago, and it's dropped down to a half mile out there at the airport. Mile and a third, Port SA, three quarters. Castroville, mile and a half, Bernie stage, and also a lot of thick fog off to the east, quarter mile around Gonzales. Rock Springs has some, so we're seeing more fog around the area and fairly thick fog uh, as opposed to clear skies. Don't have any advisories as of yet, but there may be something posted here and there. Otherwise, you just got to kind of watch out with the fog. There's going to be some some dampness, some mist around here, perhaps and some mud, uh, some damp roads. 63 right now yesterday and the day before we got down to 45. So yeah, whole different story out there. Everybody's in the 60s right now, and these numbers have really gone up. Do point to remember a couple of days ago. These numbers were down in the 20s. That's going to be just around the corner. Mold is uh, on the light side. Same thing with Mountain Cedar and throughout the rest of the morning temperatures are going to stay fairly steady right around 60 or so with some patchy fog around here. Very warm, very humid, and it's going to be downright hot for this time of year. Temperatures are going to be a good approximately 15, in some cases close to 20 degrees above normal. Got a big front moving through, but again, not before we look at uh, potentially a couple of records around here. Details coming up on the weekend in just a few minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. New this morning, San Antonio police say two people are expected to be okay following a rollover crash overnight. Happened just before midnight on I-37, just before Fair Avenue on the southeast side. According to an officer, a man was driving in the area when, for an unknown reason, he lost control of his truck. It rolled several times and landed on top of a median wall. A woman was also inside the vehicle at the time. Police say neither person was hurt and alcohol is not being considered a reason for the crash. Honoring the late Senator Bob Dole, the former Kansas Republican, will lie in state the U.S. Capitol Rotunda today. And Dole died on Sunday at the age of 98. ABC's M. Wynn is at the Capitol this morning. A final farewell to Bob Dole. The former senator will lie in state today in the U.S. Capitol, where President Biden will speak at the ceremony in his honor. For those like me who had the honor of calling him a friend, Bob Dole was an American giant. A man of extraordinary courage, both physical and moral courage. Lawmakers and Dole's family will also attend. But today's events are not without controversy. The New York Times reporting the Elizabeth Dole Foundation cut ties with the event planner working on Dole's funeral after it came to light that he had been subpoenaed by the committee investigating the January 6 attack on the Capitol. Dole served in World War II, where the battlefield cost him the use of his right arm. He had earned two Purple Hearts for his heroic efforts in war. Of all the titles I've had, you know, I tried to get one I didn't get, but the one I'm most proud of is the title of veteran. He ran for president three times before losing to President Bill Clinton in 1996, though later earning the Presidential Medal of Freedom from the man who beat him. I, Robert J. Dole. <laughs> Do solemnly swear. <laughs> oh. Sorry, wrong speech. Tributes to the late senator are pouring in since his death on Sunday. The Kansas congressional delegation honoring Dole with a wreath laying ceremony at the World War II Memorial. The advocate for veterans who also helped pass the Americans with Disability Act. Thank you so much. 
In his final op-ed saying, quote, meaningful change comes to the country when everyone puts aside their party label and works for the good of the country. Dole's casket will lie in state for public viewing for those invited until tonight. And then for Friday, a funeral service at Washington National Cathedral. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. Also in Washington, House passed a bill last night blocking the import of goods produced by forced labor in China. The measure will also impose sanctions on those responsible for human rights violations. The new restrictions will ensure that goods produced through forced labor will not be purchased or sold in the U.S. Legislation requires President Biden to provide a list of individuals responsible for forced labor groups. Meanwhile, Australia, Canada and the UK have all joined the US in the diplomatic boycott of the Beijing Winter Games due to human rights violations. A father and son have been arrested on suspicion of starting the massive color fire in California. 66 year old David Scott Smith and his 32 year old son Travis are accused of reckless arson. Both suspects are being held in the El Dorado County Jail with bail set at $1 million each. The Calder fire threatened the popular Lake Tahoe tourist area and the blaze burned for nearly two months. It destroyed more than 200,000 acres and 100,000 structures. According to the district attorney's office, criminal charges have not yet been filed in the case. A woman known as the serial stowaway has been deemed fit to stand trial. 69-year-old Marilyn Hartman has been arrested a number of times at major airports like Chicago O'Hare for trying to sneak onto airliners. She confesses to have slipped on about 30 flights over the past two decades. The seemingly harmless woman is reportedly able to blend into a crowd of passengers during the boarding process. While Hartman claims to have been diagnosed with bipolar disorder, a Chicago judge refused to transfer her criminal case to the mental health court. The so-called serial stowaway is set to go to court January 27th to answer to multiple charges, including sneaking onto a flight to London back in 2018. And time now, 436 and about 62 degrees out there. It's the most wonderful time of the year for the extra food in your fridge to cause potential problems. We'll remind you how long you should keep those leftovers. And still ahead, the battling beavers of Fall City have a big game coming up tomorrow night. Plus, the Dallas Cowboys getting their head coach back. Back outside with live cam, a whole different story in the weather department. Humidity, fog, and now heat back into the mix for the next couple of days. You're watching GMSA. We'll be right back. Welcome back, 440. The Battling Beavers of Fall City headed to the Class 2A Division II state semifinals where they face undefeated uh, Mart in Elgin. That's after they were able to beat Burton for the Region 4 title. This is the fifth straight year Fall City has won the regional championship. Now they set their sights on returning to the state title game where they won back in 2010. But first, they have to get by Mart. And now face four straight seasons to try to get back to the title game. Mart has won the state championship three of the last four seasons. They're really good, you know. They've gotten the best of us the last three years, but that's why we're out here working, so we can go and compete. And we've played them. This is going to be our fourth year in a row, and we know that the past few years it's been a battle trying to stick up with them, but this year we prepared longer and been ready for this for a long coming, and it's going to be different this year. It's Fall City and Mart in the rematch tomorrow night, 7 o'clock in Elgin. I guess I've been saying it wrong all these years. About two hours north, of San Antonio. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. Dallas Cowboys head coach Mike McCarthy will be back, back in person later today as the Cowboys prepare for their biggest rivals, the Washington football team this Sunday. McCarthy had to remain away from the team for 10 days after testing positive for COVID and forced to miss the Cowboys 27-17 victory over the Saints in New Orleans. Met with the reporters via conference call and said how frustrating it was for him to be locked in a hotel since November 26th. I'm, I'm not a big fan of the telephone. And this this is, has has really, really, really tested my my patience because um, I feel like I live on the telephone and Zoom calls. <laughs> Zeke Elliott, who was slowed by a knee injury, was a full participant at practice yesterday. 
UTSA Roadrunner quarterback Frank Harris on hand last night to help the Salvation Army clear the angel tree at Walmart over on De Zavala. The Salvation Army's angel tree provides toys to about 7,000 kids who would otherwise not have a very Merry Christmas. It's through community support that the children find presents under the trees, and Frank was a part of the final push to fill the needs of remaining 300 children, 350 children in need. Using my platform um, for, the, for the greater good, uh, it's more about it's more to it than it's just about football. Like I said, once football is over with, I'm going to remember as a great person. Um, and this is just something that I can do uh, to, to make that happen. And uh, it's more about me and it's more about just football. So UTSA, as a reminder, is playing San Diego State in the Tropical Smoothie Cafe Frisco Bowl coming up on December 21st. Right before Christmas. Time now, 442 and 62 degrees out there. Still ahead, there's usually a lot of extra food in the refrigerator during the holidays. We're going to have some easy ways to keep it neat and to keep your food safe. And gunmen on jet skis open fire near a popular Cancun hotel. We'll hear from witnesses next. And welcome back, it's 445. There is increased security in Cancun, Mexico after gunmen on jet skis opened fire at a resort. ABC's Victor Okendo has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, gunfire in a tourist paradise. There was a lot of panic, a lot of people screaming, running, um, kids crying. Zane Jones was on vacation with his wife and kids in Cancun. Jones sharing the moments he heard gunfire outside his hotel room, his family out at the pool. I immediately jumped out of bed, uh, went to the balcony and told them to get down and try to find cover. Mexican authorities carrying long guns surrounding the jet skis used by the gunmen before they opened fire near the popular Grand Oasis Hotel. Nobody was hurt. National Guardsmen lining the beach as tourists continue their vacations. Don't take your safety for granted. Everything can change in an instant. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have a live report from Mexico with the very latest. With your GMA First Look, I'm Victor Okendo, ABC News, Cancun. Well, between extra gas and extra food for the holiday dishes, the refrigerator can become a recipe for disaster. Here's 12 on your sides, Marilyn Morris, with how to keep your food organized and safe. Pull things out of the chest freezer, and then I actually move them over to the downstairs refrigerator to start the process of thawing them. When it comes to food and fridge organization, Paul Hope has a system and some advice to help you get ready for big holiday gatherings. A week or two before the big holiday meal, I like to go through the fridge, stop buying new groceries, and try to use up things I already have. It's also a good time to throw out anything that's expired or purge things you know you're not going to use before the end of the year. Adjusting your shelves can help accommodate big or tall dishes. On the top shelf, you want to keep raw, ready-to-eat foods, things like prep salads or desserts, anything that you don't want to come into contact with foods on the other shelves. The middle, that's the prepared dish zone, stuff that's covered and ready to be heated. Thawing or raw meats go on the bottom. You don't want them dripping on other foods. Less perishable things like relishes and sauces work for the side shelves. It's good. And for leftovers, there's a strategy for those too. Break them down into meal-sized portions and store them in shallow covered containers. Anything you won't eat in three to four days, freeze it. To preserve freshness and quality of foods, you really want to keep things airtight, so use products dedicated for that, like freezer bags. And if you get short on fridge space, you can always break out the portable cooler. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. So Thanksgiving was kind of a dry run, and mm -hmm. now we're getting ready to do this again. The holidays, yeah, I was telling Mike that I have never have to worry about that because my husband's constantly cleaning <laughs> the refrigerator, mm -hmm. maybe a little too much. There, yeah. It seems to spark a disagreement between yes. significant others about yes. what should stay and what should go and when, right, Mike? Yes. Yes. The uh, If the milk still tastes okay, hey, yeah. what the heck, drink it. So You said Bonnie has kind of a scorched earth policy when it comes to stuff in the fridge? Sometimes. <laughs> yes. Expiration date. You're Suggestion. Like, where did that whole shelf of stuff go? <laughs> in the anyway. trash, Mike. <laughs> anyway, and I'll dig it out and eat it from the trash. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Oh, if it's, it's like a five second rule. Okay. Don't judge me, you two. Uh, you've done it. So. Anyway, uh, a lot of fog out there. Huh? They extended the, uh, the rule. 
it's no longer five. It's now like 10 or 15. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, hey, good news. Yeah. Anyway, uh, a lot of fog out there. This is, I mean, you can't even see the, the airport, obviously, in this picture. Half mile visibility. Bernie stage has dropped down. Kerrville still at five. And Port SA has just dropped down to two thirds of a mile. Mile visibility. Castroville. So we got this really, really thick patch sitting on the northwest side of town and heading out into uh, portions of the hill country. And then a lot more thick fog uh, really all over. I mean, Rock Springs down to a quarter mile, as well as Gonzales, mile and a half at LaGrange. We're going to be dealing with this, of course, over the next few hours. Don't have any advisories posted as of yet. Obviously, the Weather Service is monitoring the situation. All right, 24 hour dew point change. Just from yesterday at this time, the dew point, the measure of moisture in the atmosphere, is up 20 degrees from where it was yesterday. And then add, you know, go back another day and it's 20 degrees above that. So we've gone up 40 degrees for these dew point temperatures just since uh, Tuesday around here. And it's going to remain very high throughout the rest of the day with a lot of humidity coming on in. And by the afternoon, I mean, it's going to be warm and humid around here. Then we get into Friday, still warm and humid, but notice the dry air, which is going to be working its way on in. The front's going to move through uh, about, oh, say, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning on Saturday, and that really, really dry air is going to be coming on in here, and that also is going to be accompanied by some really cold air that's going to be coming on in. So this is what we're, you know, this whole kind of big U-shape thing was flipped over the other day. We had very, very low humidity. It was going to be going up and then dropping back down. Now we've progressed in time, so very warm and humid today, tomorrow, and then the numbers just bottom out over the weekend. It's going to shoot right back up here into next week. So we're looking at some of the coldest temperatures of the sea, the coldest temperatures of the season so far. We've been down to 38. That was right before Thanksgiving. It's here in town. Of course, we did have some freezing temperatures in parts of the hill country, but we're looking at even colder temperatures by uh, Sunday morning. 75 degrees today at noon. Just to put it in perspective, normal high is right around mid 60s. So we're 10 above that already at noon. Then we top off at 82 today. The record is 85. I think we're going to be tying the record tomorrow. It really depends, obviously, how much in the way of sunshine we get. We're going to have a lot of clouds hanging around here. If we are going to keep a lot of clouds around throughout a good portion of the day today, should we clear out a little bit more? That 82 may be going up even more so. But then look at that. Temperatures are going to be dropping throughout the day. Upside down day on Saturday down to 35 Sunday morning right back to the mid 70s by Tuesday. So it looks like we're not going to freeze right now, at least here in town. No, okay. no, but out in the hill country, once again, freezing temperatures by okay. Sunday morning. So OK, well, we don't like the 80s. We just wait around for the weekend. Yeah, 50 degree temperature difference tomorrow afternoon to Sunday morning. More on Mike's trash cuisine coming up right now. <laughs> 452, about 62 degrees. And sci-fi fans have a new streaming option this weekend. Plus, Dwayne The Rock Johnson gets honored at the People's Choice Awards. Chicken pot pie, maybe, Mike? Anyway, pick three numbers from 352, Fireball 3, Daily 4, 5607, Fireball 2. Cash 5, 7, 13, 18, 27, 31. Lotto, Texas, 5, 9, 20, 26, 38, 40. And your Powerball numbers, 3, 7, 33, 50, 69, Powerball, 24, Power Play 2. Good luck. Well, the Rock honored at the People's Choice Award and a new sci-fi film debuts on streaming. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Daria Albinger. Heading down on another secret mission. Sci-fi fans have a new streaming option this weekend. After a one-week theatrical release, Amazon's Encounter will be available on Prime this Friday. The movie stars Riz Ahmed as a father trying to protect his son from an invasion that comes in the form of alien microbes that enter Earth's ecosystem. His co-star Octavia Spencer believes the movie has added relevance in this time of COVID. Dwayne Johnson, Jungle Boy. Dwayne The Rock Johnson won both comedy actor and male movie star at the People's Choice Awards earlier this week. As the evening came to an end, Johnson also received the 2021 People's Champion Award and promptly proved that he truly is the People's Champion. This is for you. Giving the award to a young Make-A-Wish recipient who attended the ceremony with Johnson. Thank you to Make-A-Wish in general. I just never expected that something this big could happen. Johnson ended his speech reminding people 
It's nice to be important, but it's important to be nice. A federal judge in California has dismissed Rose McGowan's lawsuit against disgraced media mogul Harvey Weinstein. The suit filed in October of 2019 was thrown out after McGowan reportedly missed a December filing deadline. The suit accused Weinstein of violating several laws as he allegedly sought to intimidate the actress so she wouldn't publish her book that chronicled her rape accusations against Weinstein. And happy birthday to John Malkovich, who turns 68 today. And British actress Dame Judi Dench is celebrating her 87th birthday. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Daria Albinger. Just saw Judi Dench in a new movie streaming called Six Minutes to Midnight. Streaming on Showtime, I believe, right now. Oh, okay. a World War II kind of thriller thing. She was the best thing about it. I was going to say, well, I'm sure she was good, though. Yeah, she was great. All right. right now, 457, about 62 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, why two Democrats broke rank and voted to repeal President Biden's vaccine mandate last night in the U.S. Senate. Instagram bringing back a popular feature. That's coming up in your Morning Tech Bites. And a quick check of the roads there with Trans Guy looking at Loop 1604 there. Uh, things seem to be moving right now, but we will be checking in with Stephen Cavazos in just a minute. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making news this hour, a man is hurt in a shooting just west of the downtown area overnight. We have details coming up. Plus details on an overnight vote in the U.S. Senate to repeal President Biden's vaccine mandate aimed at the private sector. It's been clear and chilly for mornings now, but not today. This is kind of a foretelling of what is to come. Big changes in our forecast. Mike is standing by with an update on visibilities this morning because fog is definitely an issue. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday. That is the 9th of December. Good morning. Go ahead and grab that extra cup of coffee. You may need it to work through the humidity, maybe. Yeah, heat is on later on today. This morning, though, the main focus, use those low beams, not those high beams. Here's Mike with more on the forecast. Yeah, the fog has been really thick and has been getting thicker uh, very, very quickly over the past basically hour. Right now, we're at 62 at at the airport and then that bottom number the dew point temperature the measure of moisture in the atmosphere is 61 so that gives us that relatively very high humidity up in the uh, mid 90s maybe a little bit of mist out there at the airport and that's the thing we're gonna have to watch out for is where there is fog the roads could be on the damp side so we're gonna be all the way up to 82 degrees later on today with plenty of sunshine and that's going to be flirting with the record high temperature if we obviously break out of the the clouds a little bit sooner in the day then that record may actually be in jeopardy today. It's definitely going to be in jeopardy tomorrow. More on that in a second. The aquifer went down six tenths of a foot on yesterday's reading and mold and yep, still got some mountain cedar showing up. It is the start of the season out there, though, both on the uh, the low side. All right, talk about those visibilities and it's just a half mile out at the airport. Now, Bernie stage was down to a half mile. What? 10 minutes ago. Now it's back up somewhat. So it's going to be obviously that go with that back and forth situation. New Braunfels has dropped down a little bit, mile and a half at uh, Castroville and got a lot of fog even on the bookends. Now down to zero visibility, Rock Springs, quarter mile Gonzales and a lot up around Austin too. So most everybody around the area is seeing fog this morning. And of course it, it's going to stick around. It's going to get thicker. It's going to be thinner at times, but it'll definitely be something we'll have to deal with throughout the rest of the morning commute. Warm, humid, patchy fog this morning, and then partly cloudy skies. Very, very warm. Again, we get up to 82 today, and again, should clouds clear out a little bit sooner, and we see more sunshine sooner, that's going to allow a little bit more time for heating up. So 82 could be even warmer than that. Then fog tomorrow morning. Record high temperature is 85 again tomorrow, and I think we're at least going to be tying that tomorrow. Then a big front moves through here late tomorrow night, early Saturday morning. It's going to be cold Saturday. Temperatures drop down throughout the day and then even colder by Sunday morning. Looks like uh, some of the coldest temperatures so far this season around the area. How long will that last? Details coming up in Traffic Authority. Good morning to Stephen Cavazos and uh, any problems out there. Hey, good morning, Mike. Hope you enjoyed the day off. Right now, the roads are pretty quiet, which is good, especially when we have conditions like this right outside 1604 at John Pease. Take a look right there. Uh, as Mike was mentioning, uh, with fog, is, we're seeing a lot of that in many of these shots from Trans Guide. So, 
Let's take a quick look around town and see what you can expect. 410 at Ingram, you can see that traffic is moving there, uh, but still pretty foggy at some areas like 410 at Callahan. Another look here at 281 at Hildebrand doesn't look as bad, but well, we do have traffic that's still pretty light this morning, so that's going to play in your favor, especially if you're driving out, the, if you're going to be driving in the next few minutes, uh, because again, we do have those foggy conditions out there, so watch out, and as Mark said, use those low beams. Let's first bring your attention right here to the map off Loop 410 southbound at Morrison Boulevard. There was a crash detected there. I was talking to our friends at Transguide. It does look like that crash has thankfully since cleared out, uh, and we're not seeing any issues in terms of any traffic delays. Uh, let's take a wider look at the map because we are seeing a lot of green on the screen. Very good start to this Thursday morning. However, that fog is going to be an issue if you're not taking it easy out on the roadways later. Uh, checking out these inbound times. If you're coming into the San Antonio area from any of our neighboring communities, good news from I-10 and Bernie. It's 25 minutes at this hour. 281 and Bolverde, 26 minutes. And the same goes from 35 in New Braunfels, 26 minutes to the downtown San Antonio area. One last look at Transguide. The roads are quiet for now. Very different from what we saw yesterday. So we have some good news as we start this new morning, but we're going to have some construction spots coming up in the next few minutes. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. San Antonio police are trying to figure out what led to a shooting that happened just west of the downtown area overnight. So the sh shooting started just before 11 p.m. in the 900 block of Frio Street near Guadalupe. Police say a 30 year old man was taken to the hospital in stable condition with a gunshot wound to the hand. According to witnesses, an argument was heard in the parking lot of the Vista Verde Apartments. Police say the victim was not very cooperative with officers who were trying to determine if this was a disturbance or a robbery. Fish is saying even though the Omicron variant does not seem as dangerous as Delta, Omicron appears to spread faster. Plus, there's news from Washington overnight when it comes to the president's vaccine mandate. ABC's Mona Kassar Abdi has the latest. This morning, senators on both sides of the aisle taking a stand against President Biden's vaccine mandate for private businesses. Two Democrats, Joe Manchin and John Tester, crossing party lines last night, voting with Republicans to repeal the vaccine or test mandate for businesses with more than 100 employees. We've sent a very clear bipartisan message on behalf of the people that this mandate needs to be stopped. Some of the anti-vaxxers here in this chamber Reminds me of what happened 400 years ago when people were clinging to the fact that the sun revolved around the earth. But even if the House joins the Senate in overturning the mandate, the White House says President Biden will use his veto power to keep the mandate in place. COVID cases are up 83 percent nationwide since October. The governors of Maine and New Hampshire activating the National Guard to help overwhelmed hospitals. In Massachusetts, one hospital is at 120 percent capacity. If you look at the top five states for COVID deaths right now, they're generally hovering around only a 50 percent vaccination rate. I certainly expect that we're going to see some substantial differences in the size of holiday surges here this winter based around kind of proportion of patients who are vaccinated. Hospitals stress most new patients are unvaccinated. Doctors say the highly transmissible Delta variant is driving the surge, not the newly discovered Omicron variant. Early data shows Omicron may be more transmissible, but is less severe than previous variants. And while the Pfizer study indicates Omicron likely chips away at vaccine effectiveness, data shows a booster shot offers protection. The U.S. not the only country seeing a surge. The British government is now advising people to work from home due to evidence that Omicron cases could double in the coming days. Meanwhile, a new study finds a coronavirus attacks fat tissue. Researchers say it could explain why overweight people are at higher risk. Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. Here at home, a team of 10 at the Molecular Diagnostic Laboratory, UT Health Science Center, San Antonio, is identifying strains of COVID. Take a look. This picture shows what Dr. Marjorie David's team is looking for. The Delta genetic sequencing is on top. Omicron is on the bottom. You can see there are differences between the two. The different combinations throughout the genome are the signature of the variants. We've you know, brought up uh, sequencing for SARS-CoV-2 as we've adapted to the pandemic and, and sought to find ways to help uh, Bear County to, to uh, follow how SARS-CoV-2 is um, behaving within our own community. The positive tests come from UT Health San Antonio as well as University Health Systems and Metro Health. When the tests arrive, that's when the work begins to extract the viral nucleic acid in a secure room. All of it takes 10 to 14 days. 
Bear County is announcing plans to deal with a consistent spike of domestic violence cases in our community. In the last six years, the numbers have nearly doubled and been increased by over 50 percent. The district attorney, the Family Justice Center, and multiple judges all have their own proposals to try and slow cases in Bear County. The DA asking for more than three million dollars to deal with a backlog of misdemeanor criminal court cases. We have over 2,500 individuals identified as high-risk domestic violence victims. One coordinator is simply not enough. Judge Nelson Wolf calling a special session December 21st to hear these proposals and to take action. Right now, 509, about 62 degrees. And still ahead, why Instagram says it is bringing back the chronological feed. Outside with live cam, fog, fog, fog. That's our big problem this morning. And the last couple of mornings, we were right around 47 degrees this time of morning. So a huge jump. Just wait to see the high temperatures in the next couple of days. Mike's been talking about it for about a week now. Details ahead. Now, day three of the San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium. At some point, you've probably asked whether it's possible to prevent cancer. Researchers say the answer is complicated. Our case at team spoke of a local oncologist who said it's important for women to keep estrogen levels from getting too high because that elevates the risk for breast cancer. And here's a question from Kathy Farmer. She wants to know if there is any research being done to eliminate her two positive cancer permanently. Here's the answer. We have not been able to eliminate breast cancer. As far as uh, uh, HER2 positive breast cancer, we cannot eliminate it. We still don't know why some women get HER2 positive breast cancer versus estrogen positive breast cancer. And we're going to continue to pass your questions along to researchers and scientists. The symposium continues through tomorrow. Right now it's 514. And coming up next, how Apple's new feature could warn you of repair shop scams. Welcome to Allstate. A lot less. You're in good hands with Allstate. Click or call for a lower auto rate today. Get your Macy's gifts faster with curbside pickup for the holiday host, in-store pickup for the family room sleepover, or same-day delivery for that last-minute gift. Get just what you need when you need it at Macy's. Introducing the all-new Gillette Labs with Exfoliating Bar. It combines shaving and gentle exfoliation into one efficient stroke for a shave as quick and easy as washing your face. In today's Tech Bytes, changes to Instagram. The social media platform is working on bringing back the option for users to see posts in chronological order. Its current feed option is based on an algorithm set by user preferences. Twitter is testing a new feature allowing users to add content warnings to specific photos and videos. It's a change from the current all or none method, which slaps a warning on all of your tweets. Users will be allowed to flag a specific tweet and categorize it for violence or sensitive content. Finally, Apple's new parts and service history section on your iPhone. It allows users to see if genuine Apple parts were used in a repair. It's another change to Apple's restrictive policies on non-authorized repairs. Last month, the company announced a self-repair program launching in the U.S. next year. So be, on the, be sure to look out for that. Those are your Tech Bytes. Have a great day. Now 19 minutes past the hour on your Thursday. And it was a little foggy out there. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. Well, the roads have been quiet so far, but it is still very early on. Let's get a quick look at TransGuy 35 at St. Mary's. You can see it's picking up in a few of these shots there. Not looking too bad. 35 at Cesar Chavez, quiet there. Uh, what we've been seeing, though, in, in a lot of these shots is fog. So you are going to want to use those low beams this morning and make sure that you're taking it slow. Make sure you have also that distance between drivers. But I mentioned this a little bit earlier. The good news is since there's not a lot of vehicles out there, you're not 
not really going to have any big problems, but just make sure that you're driving through this area very carefully this morning uh, and also watch out for this stalled vehicle because we do have a stalled vehicle to talk about here once we can get to the map off of 410. So let's go ahead and just jump right to it right there are those southbound lanes at South Cross Boulevard. So watch out whenever you see those stranded vehicles on, on the highway, especially when it's dark and especially when there is fog out there. We're also going to take a big jump right up here to 35 where we do have some road work that's been going on off I-35 southbound at FM 306. This started on December 5th, but should be wrapping up on December 10th, which is a few days away. Already weird to say that. Is that tomorrow? That's that's tomorrow, I think. Yeah, crazy. Nine in the evening to five in the morning. So make sure that you are planning accordingly. A little bit earlier, there was a stretch of orange that was building there along those southbound lanes, but that should be wrapping up by tomorrow. Uh, look at the map does show that we still have a lot of green lanes open, so not, not too much congestion that you're going to find out there this early in the morning. But of course, we're going to continue to watch these roads closely. Guys? No, you will. Thank you, Stephen. And that fog there, you can even see it behind you as well. Yeah, and it, it's been going back and forth, as we've been talking about all morning long. You know, uh, it, it improved, what, last uh, check right off the top of the, the 5 o'clock hour, and then it's dropped down in some places. So yeah, this is going to be going on. We do have a little bit of mist out there as well. So, yeah, this is what it looks like. And yeah, it almost looks like this picture has gotten, the fog has gotten thicker. We're trying to look that out toward the airport. We've dropped from a half mile visibility down to just a mile. Port SA is at one mile right now and mile and three quarters Stinson. So it's starting to thicken up around more of the metropolitan area, especially by the airport, kind of heading out to the west and northwest. Bernie stage mile and three quarters right now. Two at Hondo, two and a half Uvalde. Again, most everybody has been dropping down with visibilities right now, and Rock Springs is just at uh, at zero visibility, mile and three quarters over there in Del Rio. So everybody's got a lot of fog. No advisories at last check, though. All right, wind is helping out a little bit. That you know, if the wind slackens off, the fog can get thicker. You get more wind. You're not going to see as much fog. We just got a little bit out there, but obviously with all this humidity, it, it's kind of a, a the wind's almost fighting a losing battle because we do have that thick fog around here. Yesterday we made it up to 78 degrees, 82 Pleasanton, 84 in Laredo, and then add to that by about four or five degrees today. We're going to be everybody well up into the 80s and uh, it's going to be flirting with record high temperatures throughout much of the area. The record today is 85 and that's kind of banking on clouds hanging in there a little bit stubborn through say noon and early afternoon. They clear out a little quicker. We obviously start to the warming process a lot quicker and that could be put that record in jeopardy today. So we are going to have some sunshine thrown in today and then tomorrow a lot of uh, clouds in the morning, fog in the morning once again. Very warm. We keep a lot of clouds around throughout the afternoon. Um, so I'm going for a tie record or tying the record tomorrow, but we get that uh, clouds to break up and it could be even hotter than that. Then right about, uh, say, just after midnight Saturday morning, notice how the flow comes in here out of the northwest. That's the front moving on through there and temperatures are going to be dropping down then throughout the day. So we'll start off uh, right around mid upper 60s on Saturday and only 60 or even upper 50s by the afternoon on Saturday. 75 degrees today at noon, mostly cloudy skies. And again, the clouds are going to be kind of stubborn today. They break up a little bit more and we could get even hotter than that. 82 degrees, partly cloudy skies. Still, that's three away from the record. Then tomorrow, I think we tie the record of 85. Very warm, very humid fog again tomorrow. Then windy, colder throughout the day on Saturday. Only 60 by the afternoon or even cooler than that. Down to 35 Sunday morning. That's here in town. Obviously a good freeze in parts of the hill country back to 75 back close to 80 by Wednesday. How it funny. is just up <laughs> and down and up and down. It's like Mother Nature got to the end of the year and she's like, yeah, forget it. I'm done. I've got like senioritis or something like that. Or <laughs> a little this in here. You get cold, yeah. you get hot. So it she's keeps like, it interesting, though. Mm -hmm. All right. Time now, 524, and for now, 62 degrees. Still ahead in your morning spotlight, Meryl Streep learns what the term GOAT means, plus news about Miranda Cosgrove and Billie Eilish. Actress Meryl Streep learns out about a popular acronym, plus Billie Eilish makes an unusual list. Here's CNN's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. I hear there's uh, something you don't like the looks of. Meryl Streep learned something on the set of Don't Look Up. Jennifer Lawrence and Jonah Hill have said in recent interviews, people on set would call the three-time Oscar winner the GOAT, which she took to mean old GOAT. Lawrence had to explain GOAT was an acronym for greatest of all time. Young people are definitely 
leading the way. They're going to change the future. Actress and environmental advocate Miranda Cosgrove is challenging girls to help solve climate issues. HP's Girls Save the World is co-hosting a virtual workshop this Saturday and offering young participants money to develop their ideas. All they have to do is come up with an idea to help the environment in their local community. And um, you go online to solve.mit.edu and you type in Girls Save the World and you can find all the information. Billie Eilish has made an unusual list. The U.S. captioning company's annual survey of the words broadcasters most frequently mispronounce. Eilish is up there this year with the cryptocurrency Ethereum, the coronavirus variant Omicron, and the fast food chain Chipotle. Checking my pronunciations in Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. David, I think it's Omicron, but that's okay. Yeah. 528, about 62 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, why some of your favorite shoes will no longer be available at one of the nation's top shoe stores. American Indians have been in San Antonio for generations. Ahead on GMSA at 6, we'll show you how a local nonprofit is working to keep their story alive today. Making headlines this morning, the mandate battle continues for COVID vaccines. It's health experts nationwide push for more vaccines and rather more vaccinations and boosters. And taking a look outside with live cam. Wow, it's foggy out there. Uh, it's also a little warmer than it was yesterday morning. Good morning, everybody. It's Thursday, December 9th. Yeah, you can barely see anything out there. Yeah, yesterday morning we were right around 47 degrees and you see our current temperature and that could change here yeah. in the next few minutes. That's true. I uh, hope you left your t-shirt and shorts out. You know, <laughs> didn't put them away for the winter. <laughs> And winter. don't put your coat away for the winter either. No. Because, yeah, you're going to need both in the next couple of days. Uh, this morning, though, yeah, temperatures are anywhere from 15 to 20 degrees higher than what it was yesterday. Yesterday, we eventually got down to 45. And uh, yeah, it's soupy out there. The humidity has come back with a vengeance. 62. And so right now, we have 100% humidity out there at the airport. A little bit of a breeze, but with such high humidity, it's continuing to get pumped on in here. The visibility at the airport has dropped down now to just an Eighth of a mile, mile and a quarter at Port SA, three New Braunfels, and just a half mile over in Hondo. And again, keep pointing out that unlike the, the past few times we've had fog where it seems like it's been in one part of the area or the other, the whole area is covered with fog this morning and it is pretty thick everywhere you go. Three quarters of a mile Austin and zero visibility. Pea soup out there at Rock Springs. It's also dropped down somewhat at Del Rio. So we're going to keep the low clouds and fog. It's going to be pretty stubborn throughout the rest of the morning. Partly sunny skies at noon, 75 degrees. And again, we're going to be 10 degrees above normal already at noon. That, despite the fact that we do have a pretty good cloud cover, should these clouds break up a little bit sooner than that 82 degrees is going to be getting hotter than that. The record today is 85, so we'll obviously be very, very close to it. We're going to do the same thing tomorrow. Lots of fog in the morning, some mist, drizzle. Got to watch out for that this morning as well. But we get even hotter tomorrow. And I think the, rec the record tomorrow, which is, again, 85 degrees, is definitely in jeopardy. That's all going to change tomorrow night into Saturday. Big front moving on through here and we're going from record high temperatures to the coldest air of the season. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, I see some flashing lights out there. Yeah, it's not looking good here off 281 at Hildebrand Mike. Let's take a closer look from Transguide. Find out what's going on right over here because what we're looking at from this shot are a few first responders that are out there in one vehicle that has their emergency lights on. Talking to our friends at Transguide, uh, telling us that this vehicle right over here that you're seeing with the lights on uh, did have some sort of issue that caused uh, obviously first responders to show up there, but right now Texas has that listed as a crash in the area, so you can see traffic is moving through there pretty easily right now. However, a few lanes look like they are going to be blocked off while they're working to get this cleared up. Let's take you to the map and see if we're seeing any delays just yet. Now, uh, actually, we'll start over here 410 South and at South Crest Boulevard still have that stall uh, not causing any issues, but that incident that we just showed you off 281 southbound at Hildebrand Avenue doesn't look like it's causing any issues in those southbound lanes just yet, but given the fact it's 
534. We know it's still pretty early, so more folks could get out on the roadways and we could start seeing those delays if that uh, particular incident is still present. Uh, however, a wider look at the map does show that we're not spotting any other problem spots in the area just yet. We're going to continue to keep our close eyes on the roadways. However, keep in mind that fog obviously can be an issue out there for drivers if they're not taking it easy, so use those low beams. Let's take one last look here at 2 one at Hildebrandt. We're going to watch this situation closely and see if it's still there coming up in the next few minutes. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. A man who it seems wouldn't take no for an answer now may have to answer to a judge. That man has been detained by police after allegedly going on a rampage at a bar. The owner says he was upset for being refused service after hours. Katrina Weber is outside that bar on Blanco Road near Lock Hill Summa with a live report. And Katrina, how bad is the damage? I actually had a brief conversation with the owner of McFinnegan's Pub just a little while ago. He told me the inside of the bar is fine, but outside is a different story. We can see a television there that has been smashed, as well as a couple of the windows that have been broken out. Now, Castle Hills police told me that someone flagged down an officer who was passing by after 2.30 this morning asking for help. This bar technically is in SAPD's jurisdiction. Still, Castle Hills police responded as well. They say they found the man who had stripped off all of his clothing still here at the scene. The bar owner told me after staff members refused to serve the man after hours, he climbed the wrought iron fence into the patio area and went on a rampage, smashing property. Now, he believes the man who didn't seem to speak English may have been triggered by the language barrier. Police told me that they suspect that something else was at play, possibly some sort of drugs. They did take the man in for an emergency evaluation, and, but it's possible that he could face charges at a later time. The bar owner, meanwhile, faces a repair bill to fix all of the damage here. Reporting live on, on the north side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. This morning, pushback continues against federal vaccine mandates. In the CNN's Brett Conway reports, many scientists and hospitals are stretched thin as more cases are confirmed. We're definitely seeing this Delta wave hit across the U.S. right now. 23 different states have had more than a 20% increase in case numbers. With surges in parts of the Midwest and Northeast, including record high hospitalizations in Michigan, New Hampshire, and Maine. But we expect to see other areas of the country also light up in the next uh, several weeks. Likely Delta, but Omicron is spreading. Scientists are working around the clock looking into this. U.S. labs that track variants are struggling to keep up. It is a significant effort. Our staff are exhausted. But we are learning more. Pfizer says adding a booster increases its vaccine's protection by about 25 times. A third dose appears to be necessary at this time. That's what's going to protect us. Which begs the question, will the definition of fully vaccinated change? It's going to be a matter of when, not if. I fully agree with the idea that to be fully vaccinated today, you need to have three doses, a two dose prime for the J&J &J vaccine. But as health experts push vaccination, there's some pushback on mandating them. The Senate voted to repeal the federal vax or test mandate for private businesses with 100 or more employees. But that move with two Democrats joining Republicans was largely symbolic, since a vote is unlikely in the House and President Joe Biden would certainly veto it if it landed on his desk. I'm Britt Conway reporting. Top airline executives from all four major U.S. carriers are set to testify to Congress next week. They'll answer questions about why some airlines canceled thousands of flights after receiving billions of dollars in pandemic relief money. The $50 billion in federal funds was designed to keep struggling airlines afloat and prevent massive layoffs. As travel ramped up after the early days of the pandemic, some airlines say they had difficulty returning to normal operations. But unions at various carriers say some service disruptions were due to simply bad management. Blue Origin is delaying its next launch due to high winds in the forecast. On Twitter, Jeff Bezos' space tourism company announced that today's scheduled liftoff will be pushed to Saturday morning. And that means Good Morning America's host, Michael Strahan, will have to wait two more days to go to space. This will be the first suborbital rocket flight for the new Shepard capsule to carry its full capacity of six passengers. Liftoff is now set from the Blue Origin launch facilities near Van Horn, Texas at 845 Saturday morning. We're going to carry that live right here on KSET 12. 
Just about 540, 62 degrees. And still ahead, why Nike says it will soon stop selling its shoes through one of America's largest shoe chains. Outside with light camp, fog, visibility, and warmer temperatures starting right about now. Mike will have much more coming up, and we'll see if this is affecting the roads at all with Stephen. You're watching GMSA on a Thursday. We'll be right back. Now to dramatic new evidence in the Kim Potter case. She's the former police officer on trial for shooting Dante Wright. ABC's Phil Lipoff has that story. I shot him! Oh my God! Kim, sit down. Newly released video shows the moments after former Minnesota police officer Kim Potter shot and killed 20-year-old Dante Wright. Just breathe. The jury shown new body camera footage of Potter sobbing after shooting Wright in the chest during a traffic stop last April. She now faces first and second degree manslaughter charges. The defense says Potter mistook the taser for her gun, saying in her 26 years on the force, she's never fired either while on duty. She made a mistake. This was an accident. She's a human being. The prosecution arguing Potter should have known the difference, showing these photos, noting the differences in weight and color. The defendant's right hand side is where she kept her gun. Her left side is where she kept her taser. She was also trained about the risks of pulling the wrong weapon. But the defense placing the blame on Wright, arguing if he had not fought the arrest, he'd still be alive. All he has to do is stop and he'd be with us. Wright was pulled over for an illegal air freshener on his rearview mirror and an expired tag. Police later realized there was a warrant for his arrest on a weapons charge. Wright's mother emotional as she took the stand Wednesday. I wanted to protect him because that's what mothers do. Phil Lipoff, ABC News, New York. 544, 62 degrees. And coming up next, we're going to check in with a pet over at the San Antonio Humane Society that needs a new home today. Well, you want to see a cute little girl in her Ooh, little Christmas look. sweater right there. Sweet Kim's here Noel. from the San Antonio Humane Society. Who is this little baby? This is sweet little Noel. She is a four-month-old uh, terrier mix um, and has the most beautiful eyes. Like, yes. Look at her I eyes. I don't know if you can see it. That one is brown, one is blue. Yes. And she's not going to be the biggest dog in the world. No. Sure. He's take care of. Yeah, yeah, pretty simple, pretty easy. Yeah. So um, great for, for a family. You know, I want to get her outside, walking, running. When she gets old but really calm right now, which is fantastic. So All right, what you got good. leading up toward uh, as we head toward Christmas? Yeah, so for the holidays, we have this really great campaign called Empty the Shelters, and it is $25, all of our, our pets, all the way from the 6th through the 20th, but excluding ambassador pets. Okay. So, but $25, we have cats, kittens, we have sweet little puppies like Noel so and dogs. Noel's $25? Noel's $25. Wow. Yeah, come yeah. on, help us empty the shelters. And you can do a little shopping, too, if you need some toys Oh, yes, and lots of great toys. Like yes. Yeah. Yes, things to go underneath the tree for your sweet little pups. All right, well, if you'd like more information on the great deal they got going on over there, our little baby Noel with the blue and brown eyes, just head on over to the San Antonio Humane Society at 4804 Fredericksburg Road. 226-7461 is the number to call. Thank you, dear. Thank you. Yeah, how cute. In your morning consumer headlines, the largest shoemaker in the world is parting ways with a shoe retail giant. Nike says next year it will stop selling to DSW, one of America's largest shoe chains. Nike has been cutting ties with many retailers and shifting to selling more products through its own shops, websites, and mobile apps and select retailers. The company says its goal is to improve profits and tighten control over how products are showcased. Nike says it has ended about half of its retail partnerships since 2017. Costco is trying out a new way to compete with Amazon. It's now ramping up online perks available for club members. The move is part of a program called Costco Next, which started in 2017 with a few brands, but now has about 35. Deals could save online shoppers 20% or more on certain items. Costco is also using a tried and true method it uses for stores for online shopping. That is to frequently change out merchandise to get customers to come back and see what's new. The company says it plans to add more brands and products to Costco. Costco next service in the coming year. 
You know, I was looking at some of the cameras out there with Trans Guide. Still foggy, but it looks like things are moving. Let's yeah. check with Stephen Cavazos. Yeah, it's definitely still pretty foggy out there at this hour. So, of course, we want to remind our drivers before you get out on the roadway, uh, take it easy. Don't try to rush into work this morning. Uh, there's not going to be a lot of issues that are going to be you know, obstacles on that early morning commute. But let's take a quick look around town. We did have that crash there of 281 at Hildebrand that looks like it just cleared. So we have some good news to report there. But you can see from these other shots, US 90 and Nogalitos, it is picking up. Uh, we're getting closer to that 6 a.m. hour, so of course we know more folks will be getting out on the roadways. Let's get right to the map and see what things are shaping up to look like at this hour. 281 southbound in Hildebrand is where that crash was detected. Uh, we weren't seeing any delays while there were first responders still on the scene. However, we're seeing a little bit of a slowdown there on those southbound lanes, so just make sure that you are taking it slow out on the roads. Taking a jump right over here, we have a new crash off. Or that should actually read as a stall, not a crash. Pardon me. I-10 eastbound at Callahan Road, and we're seeing that trend continue a little bit further up here of Loop 1604 westbound at Northwest Military Drive. So make sure that you're checking those vehicles out before you get out on the roadways. And of course, make sure that you're giving those drivers that experience trouble plenty of room to get their issues resolved. Let's take one last look around town. I-37 at Southeast Military. That fog has not disappeared just yet. So again, take it easy out on the roadways this morning, guys. We sure will. And I can't believe it. The 80s today, yeah. possibly. Uh, wow. Yep. Uh, approaching a record today and really close. I'm going for at least tying the record tomorrow, so which is 85 degrees both days. Then the bottom's going to drop out and then come right back up. So literally this roller and you know, we always use that <laughs> that phrase roller coaster and roller coaster temperatures and humidity and everything are going to continue over the next uh, basically about the next week. All right out there at the airport. And it almost looks like we can see a couple more lights off there in the distance. I mean, obviously, it's still plenty of fog, but uh, visibility is still down to just an eighth of a mile. Mile and a quarter, Porter say it's dropped at Randolph, New Braunfels, three, five. Burning stage at one point, just what, an hour, hour and a half ago, was down to less than two miles. Now it's improved slightly, but then go out 90, run into all that fog, Rock Springs, Pea Soup, uh, Beeville. Everybody pretty much has some very, very thick fog. No advisories, though, as of as of right now. So we just got to keep watching for it and we're going to continue to keep fog around throughout the rest of the morning. A lot of stubborn clouds as well, and that's obviously going to have a, a play on temperatures. So we're forecasting low 80s, despite the fact that we have a you know, decent amount called partly cloudy skies. Should clouds break up in areas a little bit sooner, then may actually get hotter than 82 degrees today. Tomorrow, again, a lot of clouds, 85 tying the record. Clouds break up a little more. Same situation could even get up into the uh, upper 80s. Now, Saturday morning, you notice how those clouds work their way on through here, and that's the front that moves on through, and that's going to help to clear things out. Not completely, but it's going to take all the humidity, and that's going to be cleared on out of here. Temperatures will drop down. We'll start off in the upper 60s early, early Saturday morning and drop down to about 60 or even upper 50s by the afternoon on Saturday. There's all the moisture aloft in the atmosphere coming in here from the uh, west and southwest, all of the low clouds and around the country. Boy, a lot of activity up there to the north of us. And here's another big, big trough which is developing out there to the west of us. And that's what's going to be sweeping across the area and then giving us or helping to bring that uh, front on through here. Here's a longer range computer model and taking us into the weekend, of course, We've got uh, fog tomorrow morning and then Saturday. A couple of showers are possible in the early, early morning hours as that front moves on through here. Then that's going to sweep things out very, very cold by Sunday morning and it's going to turn right back around. The heat comes back up by middle of next week, first to middle of next week and also a couple of showers here maybe by the uh, middle of next week and temperatures back up almost close to 80 75 degrees today at noon mostly cloudy skies just to put it in perspective normal high is mid 60s will be about 15 degrees above that and then tomorrow we're going to be about 20 degrees above normal record both days again 85 fog this morning fog tomorrow morning much colder on saturday blustery on saturday 35 sunday coldest we've been here in town so far is 38 what i saw that was right before thanksgiving so even colder than that, good freeze in the hill country, back to 77 by Wednesday. Something for everyone. All yes. over the place. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Like a nice platter. Not an option. <laughs> oh, what? Your clothes laid out? Nice. <laughs> yeah, Let's see. Much. Today it's shorts, then it's coats. Yeah. Right. Move over, Lubies.
There's Mike's now. 554, 62 <laughs> degrees. And here are your winning lotto numbers. We have pick three, three, five, two, fireball three, and daily four, five, six, zero, seven, fireball two. Cash five number seven, 13, 18, 27, 31, Lotto Texas, 5, 9, 20, 26, 38, 40, and Powerball, 3, 7, 33, 50, 69, Powerball 24, Power Play 2. Good luck. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the growing fears of a new COVID winter surge with cases and hospitalizations rising. Some states calling in the National Guard to help, and we're taking you inside the CDC to see how the agency is trying to contain Omicron. That and so much more coming up right here on GMA. Still ahead on GMSA, San Antonio police left with a lot of questions following an overnight shooting on the west side that sent one man to the hospital. We'll let you know what we know so far. Fog is our main issue this morning right now. It does not seem to be affecting traffic in a big way, and we hope to keep it that way this morning. You were just looking at 90 at Nogalitos. There is Highway 281 at San Pedro and 1604 at Hausman. It's pretty widespread out there right now. Big warm up on tap for today. Mike will tell you how hot it will get, and we'll check back with Stephen to see if any incidents develop over the next few minutes. Bear County officials make new proposals in response to the rise in domestic violence cases here at home. We'll tell you what's next. If you're headed out the door in the next 10 or 15 minutes, widespread fog is being seen across the KSAT 12 viewing area. Big warm up on tap today. Mike says we may be near record high temperature temperatures. Live from KSAT 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now or something like that. Good morning, everybody. It's Thursday, <laughs> December 9th. Hi, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Very interesting with the temperatures. I mean, already just stepping outside today. If you haven't already, be prepared that it wasn't like yesterday morning at all. You won't need a jacket. Yeah, it was 47 about this time yesterday. 62 right now. Mike said the high temperature record today is 85. Yeah, I'm going for 82 right now and that's dependent upon cloud cover and then tomorrow I think a better chance of at least tying the record high temperature which again is 85 degrees then it's all going to change it's going to be you know it's from shorts and flip flops to heavy coats again over the weekend so fog is the big big deal this morning and as you can see out there by the airport it almost looks like visibility may have gotten slightly better at least from that vantage point temperatures very consistent all around the area low to mid 60s we're about 20 degrees above normal right now. Visibility, even though the picture may look a little bit better, uh, officially it's still just an eighth of a mile, three quarters at Stinson. That has dropped down, it's dropped a little bit at Randolph. Burning stage has started to improve, as has Kerrville somewhat, but then go out 90, run out, run into a lot of fog, going down 37, up 35, uh, 10 out in the hill country. Rock Springs still has pea soup, Eagle Pass, Carrizo Springs, a lot of fog as well. So it's very, very widespread. Most everybody has a lot of fog, and it may be the situation where where uh, you're driving along, it's okay, and then you kind of turn the corner and run into a wall of fog. Also watch out because with all the humidity out there, there may be kind of some, some mist associated with that, so the roads could be on the damp side. Mold and Mountain Cedar are both on the low side. The updated count is going to be coming out in about an hour, hour and a half or so. 60s, so temperature is basically going to be staying steady all morning, and then the wind will start to pick up a little bit later on this afternoon, just a kind of gusty at times. We'll already be 10 degrees above normal at noon. Clouds are going to be kind of stubborn throughout the morning hours, as will the fog. And then later on today, again, we get up to 82 for a high temperature. Record on or record tomorrow, then 50 degrees colder by Sunday morning. Yeah, it's just one extreme to the other. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority Steve Cavazos. Any more uh, flashing lights out there? Not spotted any just yet, Mike. Let's take one look here at Transguide. Uh, morning has been shaping up to be pretty busy. We've had a number of issues out there on the roadways, but thankfully those issues have been cleared out rather quickly. Let's take a look around town. 281 at Hildebrandt. There was a crash there earlier that has cleared out. US 90 at Nogalitos. Traffic is getting moving in that shot. And 281 at San Pedro, you can see it's still pretty light at that particular area. But one thing that we've been seeing that uh, each of these shots has in common is some of that fog that uh, Mike has been talking about. So 
Low beams will be your friend this morning and of course patience as well. Let's take you right to the map because we still have that stall that we talked about earlier off I-10 eastbound at Callahan Road. It's not presenting any problems for drivers that are maybe traveling through those eastbound lanes, but as always, make sure you give that driver plenty of room. Uh, taking a jump up here, we have that other stall off Loop 1604 westbound at Northwest Military. Again, not causing any issues, but for now, that seems to be the trending issue, those stalled vehicles. But as I mentioned earlier, there were a few other issues out on the roadways that have thankfully since cleared out. That crash was on 281, not causing any issues anymore. And we had a crash down there at 410 a little bit earlier that was causing some delays, but again, thankfully has cleared out. If you are traveling into the San Antonio area, the good news is it's green across the board. You're not going to encounter any problems if you are maybe heading out the door in the next few minutes. Uh, so again, some good news there. But as we take one last look around town, 410 North at Ingram, traffic is moving. And of course, we're going to continue to keep our eyes on the road. But as always, make sure you do the same. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. A man who was expecting to spend a night out at a bar instead is spending the morning in police custody. He's accused of going on a rampage and destroying property at that business. Katrina Weber is live on Blanco Road near Lock Hill Selma with that story. And Katrina, you mentioned earlier this started after he was refused service. Well, that is according to the owner here at McFinnigan's Pub. He says that that man showed up after hours and wanted a drink, but it seems he didn't want to take no for an answer. The police ended up taking him into custody. Officers from Castle Hills Police were the first to respond when they were flagged down after 2.30 this morning. This bar technically is in the San Antonio city limits. Well, officers say the man had stripped off all his clothing by the time they arrived. They believe he also caused a lot of damage at the bar. The owner told me most of it is out on the patio outside. He says the man climbed over the wrought iron fence and smashed up some property again after he was told that they could not serve him after hours. He says he believes there also was a language barrier because the man didn't seem to speak English. Now from the outside out here, we can see that the television is smashed up as well as a couple of the windows. And so that is a property that the owner will have to repair. Meanwhile, the man was taken in for an emergency evaluation Police tell me that they believe that there may have been some sort of drugs involved. Reporting live on the north side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. A different man in jail this morning accused of setting a car on fire earlier this week. This is 24-year-old Saul Moreno. According to an arrest affidavit, he poured gasoline over a woman's car, set it on fire, and then took off. He was arrested yesterday and now faces an arson charge. His bond has been set at $35,000. Bear County officials have announced plans to help deal with the current spike of domestic violence cases in our community. Over the last six years, the numbers of those cases have nearly doubled and have increased by over 50 percent. The DA is asking for $3.1 million to deal with the backlog of misdemeanor criminal court cases. The money would go to adding 17 additional employees and improving programs. Bear County Family Justice Center asking for $327,000 to add to staff members as well. We have over 2,500 individuals identified as high-risk domestic violence victims. Uh, one coordinator is simply not enough. And so we are going to be asking for an additional two coordinators. Judge Nelson Wolf is calling a special session on December 21st to hear these proposals and to take action. Officials say even though the Omicron variant does not seem as dangerous as Delta, Omicron appears to spread faster. Plus, there's news from Washington overnight when it comes to the president's vaccine mandate. ABC's Mona Kassar Abdi has details. This morning, senators on both sides of the aisle taking a stand against President Biden's vaccine mandate for private businesses. Two Democrats, Joe Manchin and John Tester, crossing party lines last night, voting with Republicans to repeal the vaccine or test mandate for businesses with more than 100 employees. We've sent a very clear bipartisan message on behalf of the people that this mandate needs to be stopped. Some of the anti-vaxxers here in this chamber reminds me of what happened 400 years ago when people were clinging to the fact that the sun revolved around the earth. But even if the House joins the Senate in overturning the mandate, the White House says President Biden will use his veto power to keep the mandate in place. COVID cases are up 83% nationwide since October. 
the governors of Maine and New Hampshire activating the National Guard to help overwhelmed hospitals. In Massachusetts, one hospital is at 120 percent capacity. If you look at the top five states for COVID deaths right now, they're generally hovering around only a 50 percent vaccination rate. I certainly expect that we're going to see some substantial differences in the size of holiday surges here this winter based around kind of proportion of patients who are vaccinated. Hospitals stress most new patients are unvaccinated. Doctors say the highly transmissible Delta variant is driving the surge, not the newly discovered Omicron variant. Early data shows Omicron may be more transmissible, but is less severe than previous variants. And while the Pfizer study indicates Omicron likely chips away at vaccine effectiveness, data shows a booster shot offers protection. The U.S. not the only country seeing a surge. The British government is now advising people to work from home due to evidence that Omicron cases could double in the coming days. Meanwhile, a new study finds a coronavirus attacks fat tissue. Researchers say it could explain why overweight people are at higher risk. Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. And topping your morning headlines in Washington, the House passed a bill last night blocking the import of goods produced by forced labor in China. The measure will also impose sanctions on those responsible for human rights violations. The new restrictions will ensure goods produced through forced labor will not be purchased or sold in the U.S. A father and son have been arrested on suspicion of starting the massive Caldor fire in California. 66-year-old David Scott Smith and his 32-year-old son Travis are accused of reckless arson. Both are in jail with a bail set at $1 million each. The Caldor fire threatened the popular Lake Tahoe tourist area and burned for nearly two months straight. It destroyed more than 200,000 acres and 1,000 structures. And now to your morning consumer news and good news. If you're looking for a new job, there are a lot of options across the country. The latest report from the Labor Department shows 11 million job openings in October. That's just below July's record. The number of Americans looking for work is less than seven and a half million. New predictions for falling gas prices from the U.S. Energy and Information Administration estimates gas prices will average around 3.13 a gallon nationwide this month and fall to just over $3 a gallon in January before slipping even further the deeper we get into 2022. Right now, the national average for a gallon of regular unleaded is 3.34 a gallon. 6.10, about 63 degrees. I'm ABC's M. Wynn in Washington. The late Senator Bob Dole will lie in state in the Capitol Rotunda. Details on that ceremony coming up. And taking a look outside with live can, you can see it's still pretty foggy out there. Be careful when you head out on these roadways. And also, you will not need a jacket this morning. We'll be right back. And welcome back. It is 614. Now to the late Senator Bob Dole, the former Kansas Republican will lie in state in the U.S. Capitol Rotunda today. Many from both sides of the aisle are expected to attend in remembrance of the decorated World War II former presidential candidate and World War II veteran, former presidential candidate and iconic statesman. Dole died on Sunday at the age of 98. ABC's M. Wynn is in the Capitol this morning. Good morning. This is a building the late senator knew all too well, having served over 30 years between both chambers of Congress. A ceremony to honor his legacy is slated to start later this morning. A final farewell to Bob Dole. The former senator will lie in state today in the U.S. Capitol, where President Biden will speak at the ceremony in his honor. Bob Dole was an American giant, a man of extraordinary courage, both physical and moral courage. Lawmakers and Dole's family will also attend. Dole served in World War II, where the battlefield cost him the use of his right arm. He had earned two Purple Hearts for his heroic efforts in war. Of all the titles I've had, the one I'm most proud of is the title of veteran. He ran for president three times before losing to President Bill Clinton in 1996, though later earning the Presidential Medal of Freedom from the man who beat him. I, Robert J. Dole. <laughs> I do solemnly swear. <laughs> oh. Sorry, wrong speech. Tributes to the late senator are pouring in since his death on Sunday. The Kansas congressional delegation honoring Dole with a wreath laying ceremony at the World War II Memorial. In his final op ed, saying, quote, meaningful change comes to the country when everyone puts aside their party label and works for the good of the country. 
Dole's casket will lie in state for public viewing for those invited until tonight. And then for Friday, a funeral service at Washington National Cathedral. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. Time check, 616. And that fog is looking pretty bad in some areas. Let's check in with Stephen Cavazos. Yeah, you know, and it's unclear if it brought some of these problems that we're spotting out on the road, but one can assume that we want. Uh, it's obviously not easy to navigate through if you're not taking it easy, uh, taking it slow out on the roads. That is 35 at Topper Wine. Check this out. We do have a stalled vehicle out in that direction. Uh, still trying to pinpoint exactly where it's at, but of course, make sure that you're driving carefully. You can see that it's not necessarily very clear out there, but we are going to go ahead and take you right to the map because there are some issues out of course, we want drivers to be aware of before they get out on the roads. A lot of those issues thankfully have since resolved, but right now this crash popped up off 281 northbound at Jones Maltzberger Road. Again, you're not seeing any delays there just yet, but keep that in mind. Jump down here shows a stall off 35 southbound at Somerset Road, and we're seeing that trend continuing a little bit further up off I-10 eastbound at Callahan and a little bit further up off 1604 westbound at Northwest Military. So it seems this morning, aside from the fog, that stalls seem to be that trending issue out there. And it looks like that uh, one off 35 at Topper Wide just popped up there. But yeah, it hasn't cleared out just yet. So drivers take it easy before you get out there on the roads. Yep, good reminder. And my daughter is going to be a little warm today because every day they have a theme and today is ugly sweater day. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, man. Unfortunately, it's a little, you know, warm out there. Too bad they couldn't have done that Sunday morning. I know. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah today'd be ugly flip flops day or something like that. <laughs> ugly so flip -flops. Tomorrow because, yeah, temperatures are going to be well up into the 80s. We're starting off, it's uh, about 20 degrees, 15, 20 degrees warmer than what it was yesterday. And uh, it's going to be just just as warm tomorrow and then well up into the 80s, just kind of hot and humid the next uh, couple of days. And is my uh, is my bus going to work for me this morning? Nope. Not going to probably too warm for the bus to, uh, to get going out there. Anyway, we've got a lot of fog out there and uh, that's going to be an issue throughout the rest of the morning. And the visibility, at least in this picture, looks OK, but it has not changed officially. Still just an eighth of a mile, three quarters Stinson, half mile Randolph, mile and a quarter Port S.A. And it's better heading up I-10 in toward Bernie Stage and Kerrville, but you go further out in the hill country, Rock Springs at zero visibility everywhere. Everybody has a lot of thick fog and uh, so last check, no advisories, but just be on the lookout for it. You may turn a corner, run into a lot of that thick fog, some damp, uh, damp spots on the streets because of some of the, the moisture in the air, maybe a little bit of mist associated with that. And uh, throughout the rest of today, we are going to have a lot of stubborn clouds. I think we see enough sunshine. We get a little bit more sunshine, obviously, going for 82 right now, but then may even get hotter than that should the sun decide to uh, peek through a little bit more. A lot of clouds tomorrow but it's going to be even warmer. And again, that's very dependent upon sunshine tying the record tomorrow. 82 today, 85. Both days have a record of 85 degrees. Then as we go into tomorrow night late and Saturday and watch us put this into motion right there, everything kind of shifts out of the northwest and that's the front moving on through, which is going to be in the wee hours of Saturday morning. And that's going to drop temperatures throughout the day. We'll start off in the mid upper 60s Saturday morning and then drop to the about 60 or even upper 50s by late in the day on Saturday and it's going to be windy on Saturday as well going further into the future and there's the little bit of rain maybe with that front passage uh, Saturday morning kind of doubtful though and then it's going to be even colder Sunday morning humidity Warm air comes right back in here by next week, and we'll also have a couple of showers around by the uh, about the middle part of next week, maybe starting on Tuesday. 75 today at noon, mostly cloudy skies, 10 above normal at noon, roughly 15 or so above normal later on today, partly cloudy. And again, we're about three degrees away from the uh, record. Then Friday, record high, 85, windy, colder, back to fall. Yay, by Saturday. <laughs> Wintry temperatures on Sunday, 35 degrees, back to spring and summer by the middle of the week. So kind of a little bit of every season here. I can't wait to hear more about this tomorrow. I imagine Rooney later today, literally and very mel melodramatically going. <sighs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Mom, wearing wearing so her hot. sweater at school <laughs> yes. on an 85. But I mean, it's hard to have to plan these things. It's yeah. December after all. Well, I mean, it's going to go up and down, but at least maybe indoors in the AC, she'll be fine. Let's yeah, see if she bring, <laughs> let's see if she brings the sweater home. Uh, well, we'll see. OK, we shall see. All right. 621 <laughs> about 63 degrees and some good news for the Cowboys as they get ready to face the rival Washington football team. We're going to have those details.
This Essay Salutes holiday greeting is brought to you by Walk On Sports Bistro. Hi, my name is Taylor, and I just want to say thank you to my family, my boyfriend, and all those who are currently serving or have served, and just want to wish y'all a Merry Christmas. Why hide your skin if Dupixin has your moderate to severe eczema or atopic dermatitis under control? Hide our skin, not us. Because Dupixin targets a root cause of eczema, it helps heal your skin from within, keeping you one step ahead of it. And for kids ages 6 and up, that means clearer skin and noticeably less itch. Hide my skin, not me. By helping to control eczema with Dupixin, you can change how their skin looks and feels. And that's the kind of change you notice. Hide my skin, not me. Don't use if you're allergic to Dupixin. Serious allergic reactions can occur, including anaphylaxis, which is severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems, such as eye pain or vision changes or a parasitic infection. If you take asthma medicines, don't change or stop them without talking to your doctor. When you help heal your skin from within, you can show more with less eczema. Talk to your child's eczema specialist about Dupixin, a breakthrough eczema treatment. And in today's Tech Bytes, changes at Instagram. The social media platform is working on bringing back the option for users to see posts in chronological order. Its current feed option is based on an algorithm set by user preferences. Twitter is testing a new feature allowing users to add content warnings to specific photos and videos. It's a change from the current all or none method, which slaps the warning on all of your tweets. Users will be allowed to flag a specific tweet and categorize it for violence or sensitive content. And finally, Apple's new parts and service history section on your iPhone. It allows users to see if genuine Apple parts were used in a repair. It's another change to Apple's restrictive policies on non-authorized repairs. So last month, the company announced a self-repair program launching in the U.S. next year. Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Dallas Cowboys head coach Mike McCarthy will be back in person later today as the Cowboys prepare for their biggest rival, the Washington football team, on Sunday. McCarthy has had to remain away from the team for 10 days after testing positive for COVID last week. That forced him to miss the Cowboys' 27-17 victory over the Saints in New Orleans. Sunday's game against Washington kicks off at noon at FedEx Field. And don't forget that uh, Washington is going to announce their new team name sometime next year, probably after the season ends. Yeah, that will be interesting. And, what, and of the eight to ten names they kind of settled on, I think it's going to be, and don't quote me on this, but Let's my see. guess is it's going to be the Washington Red Wolves. Okay. Red Wolves. We'll see if you're right in January. We will find out. Or maybe <laughs> maybe February, February, March. Maybe. Yeah. We'll find out because it takes time for legal stuff and brand merchandising, merchandising and all that stuff. Merchandise especially. Yeah. You bet. Well, we'll see. Time now, 626 and 63 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, San Antonio police trying to piece together an overnight shooting in the west side. We'll tell you what we know. And GMA host Michael Strahan will have to wait a little longer before he can blast off into space. We're going to have those details. And trans guy. Yep, still foggy out there. Traffic building 35 and topper wine. We'll check back in with Steven coming up. Police say the word no set a man on a course of destruction. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. He's accused of smashing property at this Northside bar. I'll tell you more about it coming up. It's about 15 degrees warmer this morning than yesterday and fog is our issue. This is a live look at one of our live cams over there off I-10 right now. Hard to see the traffic down below. We will talk to Mike and Steven in just a moment. Good morning, everybody. It's Thursday the 9th. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, it's hard to see anything out there. And if you haven't stepped outside, don't be surprised. It's not cold this morning. You don't need a jacket today. Warm and muggy and warm is just a, a beginning today, isn't it, Mike? Yeah, I mean, pretty much you can call it hot later on today as well as tomorrow. It's going to be hot. It's going to be humid. That will all change very abruptly Saturday. But first, we've got to get through the next couple of days. And we're going to be in the vicinity of some record high temperatures today and especially tomorrow. Yeah, this picture really has not changed all that much we are looking and notice the reflection first of all off the, the road so it does look like there may be a little bit of mist out there so the roads are going to be damp and somewhere 
Right over there is the uh, the tower and the airport. Visibility officially at the airport is very, very low. We're going to show you that in a second. 63, we've actually gone up one degree in the past hour, dew point 62. So the comparison between these two numbers means you got a lot of humidity, well up in the uh, upper 90% range as far as humidity is concerned. A light little bit of a wind out there. Visibility is still just an uh, eighth of a mile at the airport. It's dropped below a mile, Port SA. Two thirds Randolph, three quarters Stinson, and three quarters now at Pleasanton. Bernie Stage Kerrville still doing okay, and a lot of fog going up 35 in toward New Braunfels as well as Austin. And Rock Springs still has pea soup fog. Everybody has a whole bunch of fog around the area, and this will be sticking around for the next couple of hours. Mold and Mountain Cedar are both on the low side, and the updated count is going to be coming out in about a half hour, 45 minutes or so. Warm, humid, patchy, very thick fog this morning. Stubborn clouds, especially through the first portion of the day. We'll see a bit more sunshine later on today. And again, very warm or just plain old call it hot today. Same thing tomorrow. We're going to be hitting a record high tomorrow, 85 degrees. I think at least tying that. Then overnight into Saturday, front comes through here. It's going to get cold throughout Saturday. Temperatures will drop down throughout the day, and it's going to be even colder. Coldest temperatures of the season so far uh, on Sunday morning. Will that last, though? Details coming up in a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavasso, slow going with those damp roads and fog. Yep, uh, that's the best uh, way drivers can take it this morning, Mike. Right now, I-10 at Callahan. Let's take a closer look. You saw that shot a little bit earlier that we uh, with the vehicles down, uh, but we're seeing a lot more folks out there this morning here off I-10 West at Loop 410. You can see traffic picking up at a lot of these spots. Uh, let's all vehicles uh, receiving some assistance here off 35 at Topper Wine, but traffic is definitely moving at this hour. where We are basically at that time when we start to get more folks out there. That's when more problems tend to pop up and with the fog present, please be careful out there this morning as you're getting your day started. Let's go ahead and take you to the map here because we do have a stall off 1604 westbound at Northwest Military. Been there for a little while and that seems to be the dominant issue at this hour. Let's take a jump right over here because we have that a new crash off 281 northbound at Jones Maltzberger Road, uh, not causing issues just yet, but we know again more people are out there on the roadway, so we can start to see these lanes building up with some red. Hopefully that will get cleared. We well, do have a saw off I-35 southbound at Eisenhower Road that's causing some slowdowns there, but nothing too drastic that's going to cause any impact for the morning commute. Taking a jump down over here, we have another saw off 35 southbound at Somerset Road. So as you can see, that is the trending problem of the hour. And as we take a wider look at the map, we do have a lot of those stalls that are popping up there. One there. There's a new one off of 410, and we have one here off 35 at Topper Wine, as we just showed you a little bit earlier. But if you're traveling into San Antonio, it's still pretty much green across the board, with the exception of Lavernia 80 on 87, 24 minutes to the downtown San Antonio area. Not a big slowdown, but of course, take it slow out on the roads. Make sure you use those low beams, and of course, we'll continue to watch these roads closely as the morning does go on. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. Denied and detained. That's how the night ended for a man at a north side bar. Police took him into custody after a rampage that allegedly was triggered by him being refused service after hours. Katrina Weber is live where it happened on Blanco Road near Lock Hill, Selma. Katrina, you mentioned earlier that police believe something else was at play in the situation. Well, that's right. They told me that they suspect this man may have been under the influence of some sort of drug. A Castle Hills police say that man had stripped off all his clothing by the time they arrived after 2.30 this morning. This is at McFinnigan's Pub. Someone had flagged down the Castle Hills police officers for help, even though this bar technically is in the San Antonio city limits. Officers say they did have to struggle with him a bit. The bar owner told me things turned violent after staff refused to serve that man after hours. He says the man then climbed over a wrought iron fence into a patio area where he broke a television and several windows. The owner says the man didn't seem to speak English and that seemed to frustrate him, that language barrier. The police did take the man in for an emergency evaluation, but they say it's possible he also could face criminal charges. Reporting live on the north side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. San Antonio police trying to figure out what led up to a shooting incident last night on the west side. It happened around 11 o'clock in the parking lot of the Vista Verde Apartments on South Frio, not far from I-35. And that's where officers found a 30-year-old man with a gunshot wound to the hand. He was taken to the hospital. We were told the man was not cooperating with investigators on the scene. Scary moments for a man and woman involved in an overnight rollover crash down on the south side happened around 1230 this morning on I-37 at Fair Avenue. 
That's where police say the man who was driving lost control of his truck before rolling it multiple times and eventually landed on top of the median. Both the man and woman inside were not hurt. Officers say alcohol was not a factor in the crash. And some parents are taking extra precautions as concerns about the Omicron variant comes closer to the community. This is bringing more parents to vaccinate their kids who are five or older. KSAT 12's Jonathan Cotto joins us live from the Alba Dome with details. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning, Mark and Stephanie. And that's right. I'm outside of the Alamo Dome, one of Metro Health's mass vaccination sites. Let me, let me tell you, everyone's reasons for getting their children vaccinated are different. For some, it's the holidays. And for others, well, it's that new variant. Dr. Seth Kaplan with the Texas Pediatric Society says there has been a good response by families of kids ages 5 to 11 years old who are getting the vaccine. Across the state, about 50% of kids have had their first dose. With lots of holiday gatherings coming up, Kaplan says this is a good time to get eligible children their first dose. That way they have some sort of protection in their system. Metro Health is hosting a couple mass vaccination sites here at the Alamo Dome. The site opens at noon, and the site at the Wonderland of America's Mall opens this morning at 10. Now, back here live at the Alamo Dome, hundreds of families are expected to fill this parking lot here. We have all the information you need to know, so plan ahead and get here safely. You can head on over to ksad.com for that information. Look for this story on the homepage. Reporting live from the Alamo Dome, Jonathan Cotto, KSAD 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. Well, around the country, pushback continues against federal vaccine mandates. And as seen as Rick Comrie reports, many scientists and hospitals are stretched thin as more cases are confirmed. We're definitely seeing this Delta wave hit across the U.S. right now. 23 different states have had more than a 20 percent increase in case numbers. With surges in parts of the Midwest and Northeast, including record high hospitalizations in Michigan, New Hampshire and Maine. But we expect to see other areas of the country also light up in the next uh, several weeks. Likely Delta, but Omicron is spreading. Scientists are working around the clock looking into this. U.S. labs that track variants are struggling to keep up. It is a significant effort. Our staff are exhausted. But we are learning more. Pfizer says adding a booster increases its vaccine's protection by about 25 times. A third dose appears to be necessary at this time. That's what's going to protect us. Which begs the question, will the definition of fully vaccinated change? It's going to be a matter of when, not if. I fully agree with the idea that to be fully vaccinated today, you need to have three doses, a two dose prime for the J&J &J vaccine. But as health experts push vaccination, there's some pushback on mandating them. The Senate voted to repeal the federal vax or test mandate for private businesses with 100 or more employees. But that move, with two Democrats joining Republicans, was largely symbolic, since a vote is unlikely in the House and President Joe Biden would certainly veto it if it landed on his desk. I'm Britt Conway reporting. Airline executives from all four major U.S. airlines are set to testify to Congress next week. They'll answer questions about why some airlines canceled thousands of flights after receiving billions of dollars in pandemic relief money. The funds were supposed to keep struggling airlines afloat and prevent massive layoffs. But as travel ramped up after the early days of the COVID-19 pandemic, some airlines say they had difficulty returning to normal operations. But unions at the various carriers and some service disruptions were due to bad management decisions decisions and flawed scheduling systems. Blue Origin delaying its next launch due to high winds in the forecast. On Twitter, Jeff Bezos, a space company, announced that today's scheduled liftoff will be pushed to Saturday morning. That means Good Morning America co-host Michael Strahan will have to wait two more days to go to space. Strahan will be joined by Laura Shepard uh, Churchley, daughter of first American astronaut Alan Shepard and four paying customers. This will be the first suborbital rocket flight for the new Shepard capsule to carry its full capacity of six passengers. Liftoff is now set for Blue or from Blue Origin's launch facilities near Van Horn, Texas on 845 Saturday morning. We'll carry that live right here on KSAT 12. And time now, 640 and 63 degrees for now. So head on GMSA, how a local nonprofit is working to preserve the history of American Indians in San Antonio. 
welcome back. It is 644, a local nonprofit organization working to preserve the culture of the American Indian in Texas and Bear County. RJ Marcus tells us about their efforts to keep their story alive. As far back as there was mammoths walking on this ground, there were people living here in San Antonio. Ramon Vasquez is the executive director of the American Indians in Texas at the Spanish Colonial Missions. He says archaeological evidence shows that our area has a 10,000-year history of occupation and was heavily populated. Primarily because of the, the, um, the rivers, right, that are associated to the San Antonio and Bear County area. You know, that's um, the main reason why, you know, we ended up with five missions. Vasquez says no other area in the southwest or in the U.S. had the concentration of missions, and these are the origins of the Tepilam Coltecan Nation. Many of them are descendants of the aboriginal people that came out of the missions of San Antonio. Vasquez and the American Indians in Texas work to protect the culture and traditions of the Native American tribes and other indigenous people who lived in the missions. He says much of their contributions to to our area are largely unknown. They were the protectors of this area when there were being when there was raids. Vasquez said in the 1740s, the area was under attack by hundreds of Apaches and Mission Indians fought to save La Villita, the Canary Islanders, and Presidio soldiers. We probably wouldn't have a San Antonio, but it didn't happen that way because a hundred men came out and protected them. Years later, Mission Indians also participated in the first cattle drive to support the American Revolution. But it's ultimately been a struggle to get these stories told. That's something Vasquez says he will continue to fight for. How do we take a, a, a good look at what we've done historically with Native Americans? We change that narrative because our children deserve you know, to hear it. RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. And coming up tomorrow on GMSA, we're going to have more on why the nonprofit group feels their history has been erased and what's ahead in the future. Time right now, 646. Go ahead and check back with Stephen Cavazos. Check out this shot from Transguide. It is uh, very difficult to make out exactly what we're looking at here. 281 at Quarry is the shot we are uh, being provided by our friends over there. Uh, we had some flashing lights. Looks like they, those just went off, but obviously the conditions out there are making it very difficult to see what was going on. Taking you right to the map, though, we did have a stalled vehicle or crash that was detected in that area of 281 northbound at Jones Maltzberger. Uh, looks like that could have just cleared out. It wasn't causing any issues on the roadways, but of course, always make sure that you're driving carefully out there. Taking a jump right over here, we have a stall off I-35 southbound at Eisenhower Road, not causing problems, but check out this stall off I-37 northbound at I-35. You are starting to see that delay on 37 with traffic building, so not looking good out there. A jump right over here does show another stall that's causing some problems, Loop 410 northbound at East Houston Street. Uh, that has been the dominant problem throughout the morning, those stalled vehicles, and again, we are seeing that traffic that's building in a lot of these areas, and the US-90 also facing some of the same problems going eastbound. But of course, we'll continue to watch these conditions closely. Let's go ahead and flip the camera here. Take a, one last look around town. There's I-10 West at Loop 410. Traffic is getting moving, but let's go ahead and check in with Mike for the forecast. Thank you very much, sir. And yeah, fog, that is, that's the big, big issue this morning. Now switch the camera around. There's 410 looking off to the east, and obviously you can't see too awfully far. Now granted, this camera's on top of the building right there, but even down at the surface, visibility is only, uh, you know, a few hundred yards, eighth of a mile there at the airport. Three quarters Port SA, Stinson, Pleasanton has dropped down. New Braunfels has dropped down as well, and zero visibility still, still around uh, Rock Springs. So everybody's seeing some fog this morning, some Mist, mist. The roads are damp. 63 in town, 65 Stinson. Everybody is about uh, 20 degrees above the normal low temperature. And we're this is closer to the, the actual normal high, which is mid 60s this time of year. Humidity is obviously sky high and it's going to remain through today and tomorrow. We're going to be dealing with the same thing tomorrow morning. More mist, more fog around the area. Then tomorrow night into Saturday, another front comes through here and the bottom is going to drop out. Humidity is just going to go away. Bone dry air temperatures will drop down throughout the day on Saturday and then Sunday. Once the wind kind of settles down, we are going to be seeing coldest temperatures of the season so far to start off on Sunday morning. So here's what's going on. We've got this kind of zonal pattern, which means these upper level wind lines are moving basically straight across the uh, United States and uh, then we get into this southwesterly flow, and that's what's going to help to enhance temperatures and get us up there close to records today and tomorrow. 
Friday into Saturday morning. Here's the trough up to the north, and that's going to push the front through here. But notice how in behind that, we don't really have the upper level wind lines coming straight down out of Canada. So it's a very shallow front, which or which means a shallow air mass, I should say, which means Yes, it gets very cold, but it doesn't stick around all that long because it's going to be, once we get into the first part of the week, back to the very warm temperatures. High pressure is going to build on in here. Humidity comes back in here. We will have a chance for a couple of showers then by the middle part of the week next week. So forecast goes like this today. 75 at noon. A lot of fog around this morning. It's going to be very stubborn throughout the morning hours. And even by noon, we'll still have plenty of clouds around here. I'm going to call it partly cloudy skies later on today. 82 for high temperature. Should skies begin to break up a little bit more earlier on, say about noon or so, 82 uh, may be on the low side of things. We could actually be flirting closer to the record high of 85 today. I think we hit it tomorrow. Then that front moves through Saturday early and temperatures drop down throughout the day. 60 by late afternoon or even upper 50s, 35 to start off Sunday morning, then back to the warm and humid conditions. So quick shout out, Ballet San Antonio back on stage. Uh, let's started last weekend with the Nutcracker at the Tobin and this weekend as well. Tickets are going really fast. So if you want to see, it's a great Christmas tradition. So see the Nutcracker. And, and you're back as uh, mm -hmm. Mother, Mother Ginger. Ginger. We had a late rehearsal last night and Sunday afternoon, the uh, matinees. How many years have you done this now? This is number six. Didn't do it last year, of course, right. but this right. is the sixth year I've been doing it. So. How nice. fun. Looking yeah. forward to it? Oh, it's a blast. Yeah, it, you know, the rehearsal and everything. And they're just such a great group of folks out there and so talented. That just amazes me all the time seeing them dance. So. Well, again, break your leg, buddy. Yeah. Thank you. We look forward to it. 651, about 63 degrees. And another look out there with a live cam. You can still see fog in that shot right there. 63 degrees out there. We'll be right back. It seems no is not what he wanted to hear. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. Police tell us that a man went on a rampage at this Northside bar after he was refused service after hours. Of officers with Castle Hills Police were flagged down after 2.30 this morning in the area near McFinnigan's Pub. This is on Blanco Road near Lock Hill, Selma. They say they found the man stripped of his clothing outside the bar. They took him into custody for an emergency evaluation. We spoke to the bar owner briefly. He says that that man became irate after he was refused service after hours. He says the man climbed over a wrought iron fence where he smashed a television and several windows. And again, police did take him into custody to be evaluated. They say they believe he was under the influence of some sort of drug, but it's possible the man also could face criminal charges. Reporting from the north side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. And if you are heading out the door in the next few moments, this is what you can expect right now for that morning rush. 37 at Jones Avenue. It's not looking good there. You can see a slowdown happening and some flashing lights. That's because we do have a stall detected in that area, and you can see that buildup off I-37 northbound at 35. Not the only issue taking a jump right over here. Another stall causing some problems off 410 northbound at East Houston, and another one here off I-35 southbound at Eisenhower Road, Mike. A lot of very thick fog. Uh, no, it's still no advisories are issued, but just to watch it and watch for damp spots on the roads. Visibility is very low all around the area and uh, really as far as the, the eye can see is if you're within earshot, you got some fog out there. 64 degrees, so we're just about at the normal high right now. Flirting with a record high later on today. 82, same thing tomorrow, up to 85. Big front. It's going to cool us down just in time for the weekend. Some of the coldest air of the season by Sunday morning. Thank you very much. Uh, have a great day. I was going to say stay warm, but not yet. <laughs> not yet. Cool stay cool. Off, stay cool and then stay warm later. Stay cool now. Stay warm Sunday. Right. Right. right? We'll, we'll get it okay. right. Okay. Right. <laughs> have a great day. Go team.